Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about supracondylar humeral fracture imaging. Supracondylar humeral fracture often seen simply referred to as supracondylar fracture, a classic pediatric injury which requires vigilance as imaging finding can be soft talk. Simple supracondylar fracture are typically seen in younger children and are uncommon in adults. 90% are seen in children younger than 10 years of age with a peak age of 5 to 7 years. These fractures are more commonly seen in boys and are the most common elbow fracture in children, around 55 to 80 percent. These injuries are almost always due to accidental trauma, such as falling from a moderate height, bed, monkey bar, rarely less than 5 percent supracondylar fracture are seen due to a fall on to a flex elbow. They occur in older individuals and require different management and are discussed separately. See flexion supracondylar flexion. There are two types of supracondylar flexion extension 95 to 85 percent and flexion less than 5 percent type. Extension type supracondylar fracture typically occur as a result of fall on a hyperextended elbow. When this occur, the oligon act as a program after engaging in the oligon portion. The home run fracture entirely initially and then posteriorly. They result in an extra articular fracture line and posterior displacement of the distal component. Classification. The RC type, type 1 is undisplaced. Type 2 divided into subtype. Type 2A, no rotation deformity and tie to B rotation deformity. Tie 3 complete the test from lateral and AP radiograph are usually sufficient and in many instances demonstrate an obvious fracture. Often however no fracture line can be identified. In such case, assessing for the indirect sign is essential. Anterior fat pad sign. The anterior fat pad is elevated by a joint fusion and appears as a loosened triangle on the lateral projection. Posterior fat pad sign. Anterior humeral line should intersect the middle surge of the capitulum in most children, although in child under four years, the anterior humeral line may pass through the anterior third without injury. This is an example of completely displaced supraganular flexion. This AP and radio, AP and lateral radiograph, what we can see is there is a lucency line across the distal fibrous consistent with a supracondylar fracture. A line drawn along the anterior border of the fibrous does not intersect the middle surface of the Capitulum indicating 
the departure is somewhat possibly inclination. This AP and lateral elbow X-ray, so the minima displays suffragant attraction. Treatment. Although in many cases the fracture is easily seen in some instances, or that may be seen is soft tissue swelling or an anterior fat pad sign. Even in the absence of an obvious fracture, the patient needs to be treated with a cast. A repeated, repeating radiograph of the inflammation has subsided side may be helpful in demonstrating the fracture. This is typically done 7 to 10 days later. Nijiman by Thai, Taiwan. Fracture are stable and can be treated with cast immobilization for approximately three weeks. Thai 2. Type 2A usually require reduction. Although traditional these structures were treated non-operatively with cause immobilization of the black arm to 120 degree is hard. Dramatically, <laughs> increase the risk of ischemic contracture as much most also recommended percutaneous pinning and cast immobilization with less than 9 degree flexion 90 degree flexion tied to be already required a reduction plus minus fixation High street. Fracture can sometimes be treated similarly to type 2, although frequently the fracture is held open by interposed soft tissue require open reduction. Complication. There are three main complications. First one is malunion, resulting in cubitus virus, ischemic contracture due to the niche occlusion to the pressure artery and result in valor compartment syndrome. Damage to ulnar nerve, major nerve, and urgent nerve, most commonly injury at the time of injury, is the anterior interosseous nerve followed by the raja nerve and then ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve injury is more common infection type fracture. Thank you.